For many, this heat, dust, and isolation remain the perception of agriculture. However, in the 21st century, agriculture is an exciting high-tech sector that feeds the world. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning, Devop? You doing well? Yeah, we 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 cupping and we're doing our thing. It's a little bit chilly this morning for a spring morning, and um, that brings us to today's topic. We are going to be talking about frost and frost damage to um, fresh produce. Um, we've heard anecdotally for a couple of weeks now, two to three weeks, about people having damage to their young um, new growth on the deciduous crops. And um, to to tell us a little bit more about this, we've decided to invite a guest. And we've got um, on our show today, we've got Eber Rabi, who is the managing director of Price Forbes South Africa. Um, they deal with us every single day as um, crop insurers. So um, Eber's going to tell join us in a moment and tell us a little bit more about where we're at with that. And also, Eber was one. Eber was one of our first podcast guests on right in the beginning. So. Um, I'll also post a link to that podcast on uh, on the comments, and then uh, please go listen to it because it's a lot more in depth about insurance in general, not just about uh, what we're going to be talking about now. Good one, Devil. Yes, welcome, Ebo. Yeah, thank you, Louise. Thank you, Devil. Nice to be with you guys again, as always. Yes, yes. Great to Good have you. you. Thank you. So, Frost. It's, uh, it's not a four-letter word, it's a five-letter word, but it might as well be a four-letter word. Tell us a little bit about, um, yeah, over to you. I think the, the, obviously, all of us in the Western Cape were aware of that cold spell we had last week or the week before. You know, we had snow back in the in the Koabokka Felt and across the region, but it was really a cold spell, which was, I wouldn't say it's unseasonal, but, you know, when we have this spring change of weather scenario, it's always a risk. And, you know, so one of my clients said it's probably a 10 year cycle. So, you know, anecdotally, I've heard about oh, about a million cartons being lost in the in the Karkamas region due to frost. Wow, that's okay. In, I've had some clients in the in the Montague region as well who've lost their stone fruit crops due to frost. So, you know, it really depends on where you are, you know, in terms of your farming operation, you know, and it comes down to how you manage frost as well. You know, you obviously live in the X Valley where people are burning tires and flying helicopters and putting up frost stands and all kinds of things. And frost is very difficult to manage. Um, you know, some of the table grape farmers talk about drop irrigation and micro irrigation, which is the better one. And it seems to be that micro micro irrigation is something that prevents frost uh, better than drip irrigation. You know, it's it's changing the humidity of your orchard. And I think that's the, the ultimate thing that you can try and manage your manage your crop uh, and try and prevent damage. But it's one of those one of those losses that. You know, you can't you can't prevent it uh, properly. Um, you can't insure for it at the moment. We're working on some products in the parametric insurance field where we're going to try and get frost cover in the future. South African Insurance Association doesn't allow us to do parametrics yet in South Africa, but it's one of those that we will be looking at into the future. Um, yeah, I think the, it's really difficult to manage. That's the. That's the, and how do you how do you plan? You know, you you forecast five or six thousand cartons of table grapes, and suddenly you lose 10, 20, 30 percent of your crop. Uh, you know, you put all the input costs into that already, and you know it's a really a uninsured loss, which is very difficult to to control. Okay, so, so have you got any? Have you got any? Um, have you got any anecdotal or um, proven stories of how people are managing to to um, to control frost? I know, as you just said and explained, it's very difficult. Yeah, 
I think the, the, the chaps and the farmers who are situated in low lying in low lying regions who are close to let's call it the river or you know where frost obviously drops down to low lying regions. So they've some farmers have learned to manage it. And as I said, you know, some of the table grape farmers in the Blowfoots region region talk about micro irrigation and that seems to have prevented them from having frost damage where they've seen farmers around them who don't have micros and are using drip irrigation where they've just suffered immense damage. Um, if you take, you look at the some of the farmers just above the, the X Valley towards Taj River, there's some frost stands that have been erected. Um, I've seen how those have worked in the past uh, successfully. And when the temperature, temperature drops below, say, minus two or three degrees Celsius, the fans switch on and you can prevent some damage, not everything. I mean, it covers maybe five or six hectares, maybe not 20 or 30 hectares. So, but again, it comes at an exorbitant expense to go and put up frost fans to try and prevent it. And I've even heard of helicopters being, being hired to, mm -hmm. to go up and just get the circulation of the air currents flowing. Uh, yeah, but, well, we've, we, we've, we've done work with, uh, AGI frost fans. Um, so we've, we've filmed them being installed. We've seen them working and it's, it's really a fantastic product. And I, I I've seen stuff where Stian has shared about the frost that happened last week in the X Valley and how some of the fans successfully covered seven hectares, um, in a go. But like I said, it is an expense. But I've also heard of growers who said that they've been able to repay that in two seasons just by the savings. That absolutely, Abs absolutely. It's a bit. It's the same philosophy when it comes to something like hail nets. You know, you you put up a hail net, yes, maybe to stop the hail, but at the same time, you're creating a better <clears throat> microclimate, you're getting better production, you're stopping sunburn, you're stopping wind damage, you're stopping all other things, and you seem to managed to repay the, the capex of putting up hail nets or shade cloth or whatever you want to call it uh, for one reason but it creates far better microclimates and you get better production so it seems to pay for itself so the alternative is to for us to create insurance products if you can't afford the hail nets then then you just insure for hail or wind or something else and obviously we do a lot of that we do we Sure, a couple of hundred farmers around the country for mm -hmm. hail and you know natural disasters that's insurable obviously at a premium so you must you must offset the one against the other is it cheaper to put up a hail net as opposed to paying an insurance premium and having assessed losses and, and payouts that's the that's the catch 22 always for a farmer to make that decision look and like you said at the moment there isn't the product available for frost so yeah, it, it, so we absolutely there isn't a product. And um, in the past, we we used to be able to do, do kind of revenue insuring products where we had multi peril frost and floods and all of that insured under income based policy. That policy is no longer available. Um, now we have to start thinking out the box. You know, so if you look at, I spoke you know two days ago. I spoke on Adescu about parametric insurance and how it gets used globally to mitigate that's what weather related risks like frost like heat damage um any 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 measurable weather risk that you can measure from a weather station or from satellite data i mean i've looked at some risks where we where we go on a parametric basis where we get satellite data which is so accurate we can get data to per square meter for instance, um, even in, in places like the X Valley, very accurate, correlates very accurately to long term, long term yield data, correlates to long term um, weather data. And once you have data, you can build a, a parametric insurance solution, which correlates to damage. So if you do have a frost event, and the temperature drops below, say minus three or four degrees, that you can then build a product that pays you out for that. You don't need an assessment. Um, it just triggers on on the temperature drop. That's when the trigger happens. So, so tell me quickly what what is a parametric insurance for for somebody that might not know? Like I, I've got a very 
brief idea of what it might be. So just quickly explain that to us. It, in, the, in the first place, it's, it's a non-traditional insurance. So in, many years ago, in 2001, I structured the first parametric in Africa, which we then, we based it on a, a test case in the Coeboquapel, where we said if, if the temperature drops below minus four degrees, that is classified as a what we call a cold day and the probability of you then having frost at minus four is very high so then we we say every day below minus four degrees celsius gets allocated the rand value so you can say if you have minus four how much damage are you going to have at that temperature so you then if it does occur then the insurer would then pay you out because the trigger was the temperature dropped below, below minus four. The same, the same way you can do for something like ex excessive rain. So if you, I'm, I'm using the X Valley because Lewis, you come from the Valley, you know how it all works. Thank you. So, you can, so, so table grapes is very susceptible to excessive rain damage, right? So if you then say, you are packing in the weeks one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you foresee that you're going to do five or ten or twenty thousand cartons per week in that period. If you then have a rain event that is in a probability of causing damage of say ten or twenty millimeters of rain, uh, you can't control it. Your probability of getting diseases and botrytis and all kinds of things are going to happen, and you're going to lose volume. Normally, the volume won't be lost in that week that the rain occurred. It will normally be lost in the following week, right? So if yes. you had rain in week one, you're going to lose crop in week two or three. So what we then say, fine, if the, te if the, if the rain goes above 20 millimeters of rain, and can, can be a, an accumulation of rain. So we can have three days of 10, 20, 30 millimeters of rain, and you know you're going to have damage, right? So we then say, if that trigger event occurred and you said every week the value of your income for that week or the, subs or the subsequent week is going to be, say, a million rand, and you would probably lose 50% of your crop, which is then 500,000 rand. So the, the event is the, is the trigger. In other words, the event occurred. It's measured by the satellite or a Hortec uh, weather station or whichever independent weather authority gives us the, the figures that we're working on so it's not manipulative you can't manipulate the data it's not as if you can take somebody with a watering can and fill up yeah. a little bucket right so it Let's must make be a picture not it must be data that you can't manipulate so it's an independent source we all agree it's an independent source the insurer agrees he sits in london or zurich or wherever he sits he can see the weather data as well when that trigger event happens we've agreed the value that you're going to get paid out that there's no assessment the trigger is what happened and then you would get a payout because you had the loss so it's a very nice tool it, it gets used globally it's quite a lot at the moment i can give you an example for instance if you take florida now florida you have lots of hurricanes that come through and they normally get categorized as a hurricane two three four five and six all right so at the moment, the way we understand, you can't get hurricane insurance in a state like Florida, as an example. But now you can insure your risk with parametric insurance, because they allow, they allow that kind of insurance to get used. If your risk is in that zone where the hurricane came through, it gets categorized as a Category 5, then you can say a payout of 80% of your insured value. If it's a category four, you could say 60%, category three, say 50%. And say if it's a category six, you know you're going to lose everything. So then it'll be 100% payout. So that's the measurement. And the same you can do on for earthquakes, for instance. If, it's, if you're in an earthquake zone and you can't get earthquake insurance, if it's a five on the risk scale, you would get, say, 80% payout. If it's a four, 40% payout. So that's the parametric. It's a statistical and no, statistic calculation based on a measurable incident, um, non-traditional. Um, so we need the insurance association in South Africa to approve the product as a insurance-related product that we can sell in South Africa.
And at the moment, we don't have that approval yet. Um, the insurers are working in the background getting the importance cut. It's the association is called SAIA, South African Insurance Association. They have to approve every financial product before we can sell it. Otherwise, we will get fined for marketing something which is not uh, regulated. Okay. So the, the million dollar question literally is how much is it going to cost? How does how does that work for a grower? Does he does he only insure for that period that there might be damage, yes. or is it a monthly yes. thing? You can so if you if you have a farm and you got a few hundred acre farm and you you don't have to go insure everything. You're insuring the financial loss, so you don't have to insure every variety. All you give us is the is the is the monetary value of your potential loss due to the weather related event, be it frost, be it heat wave, be it excessive rain, all these factors which you can't get under traditional insurance, but you, you can measure it with a weather station or a satellite station. So it really comes down to what is your potential loss. And the premiums is difficult because the premiums are a component of the history of that event having occurred in the past 20 or 30 years. So if it occurs regularly and you want to, if you say, for instance, you want to ensure that five millimeters of rain, that's going to cause you damage. But every year during weeks one, two, and three, you get five millimeters of rain. So the probability of the insurer paying out is going to be 80, 100%. You're going to be paying for your neck for that, right? But the, mm. we call that a strike. So the further you, you move away from the strike, the cheaper it becomes. If you then say 50 millimeters of rain is going to be my strike, you pay a lot cheaper because the probability of you getting 50 millimeters of rain in that period is very low because that gets seen as a anomaly or eight um, skitter, as they say in Africa. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And we we had it last year. You remember last year in the Valley, we had that we had those mm. floods and. We had so much rain that came through and caused immense amount of damage. The same with yes. the Orange River. You know, we had lots of rain damage. And you can't insure for that under your traditional. And if we can get the approval to get parametrics as a product, I uh, do think we'll have a, a huge demand for people taking that. Because you don't have to even be a farmer insuring the parametric. You can be a fruit exporter, for instance. So if you are dependent on on fruit coming from a region, you as a fruit exporter can take out the parametric as well because now your financial loss and viability is dependent on the on that weather event occurring as well. I mean, you can take a silo operator, for instance, that's dependent on grain from a region. So if that if that region gets a drought, which is potentially not insurable, I mean, we take the Western Cape where we can't get drought insurance, but if if that canola crop gets a drought damage, you can say, well, if during the growing period that the, that the rain is below a certain threshold that gets classified as a drought, that silo owner can take out a parametric insurance or exporters or traders. Uh, it's it, the industry is so wide. Uh, the reason there are, you know, it really okay. comes down to thinking out the box and where you apply. It. All right. So just before we started, we had a we had a very brief chat about what is possible possibly coming and um, what I, I know a lot of the the growers and the farmers and everybody they do follow the weather channels. But we uh, we're going to chat about what you. I just want to share something. And I've, like I've said, I've been trying to get this person to come and chat to us for a very long time. So hopefully, sees us. I'm going to send it to him that he needs to come and talk about these weather things. And it's a page on Facebook called Lunt Water. In English, land, water. You spell it and say it the same as in Afrikaans in any way. Um, uh, he shares very valuable info and satellite pictures um, of things coming. Like the storms that was here the past weekend, he he said there's going to be, it's going to be a very massive sea. And well, obviously a lot of people either didn't follow me or didn't listen, So, which is probably the latter. So there's all uh, the storm swells are moving through the area, um, snow on the mountains. So it's a very, very informative page to follow. And he posts in Afrikaans and English 
for those that might be interested and I'll I'll share this link in the comments also so do you want me to share your <clears throat> screen I think yeah obviously people like myself we have access to quite a lot of data and information and reinsurance uh, websites where they monitor weather patterns for me I, I I go the simple route. I look at something like website Wendy, which gives me quite uh, accurate information, you know, down to the day or week or a couple of days in advance. So, because I specialize in, in crop insurance, and with crop insurance, if you insured today for hail damage, your cover that you get only incepts after seven days. So, mm. you know, the insurers don't like to insure you one day today and tomorrow we know it's going to hail so they they take a, a view like you would take a view as to what's going to happen in seven days from now i mean if you just look at this uh, page that uh, on windy so today is thursday and it looks pretty you know windy we get some stop some rain in, in Stellenbosch. but if you look forward um going to sunday or you know we start seeing some thunderstorms occurring down here um monday looks even worse you know, if you go down to Barrydale, we're looking at a storm cell brewing there. It's probably going to move across to the lump um on Wednesday, potentially. I'll just have a look here. Done on, sorry, Monday night. I mean, these are, you know, areas which are exposed. So you've got early pears, which are busy setting. You've got some stone fruit busy setting. So <clears throat> if you have a... a a hailstorm now you're gonna have a problem so and that's that's only four or five days from now so it might just be too late to insure it because you know maybe only next week thursday it's clean again but you're gonna miss this this potential potential loss that you would have had yeah um that to me is a concern and how accurate windy is is debatable um but i think historically it tells me we're gonna have a big storm cell brewing next week and that's, well, that's look, look, it, it, it might not be 100 percent accurate but it will give you a good idea and and yes and, uh, again please correct me if i'm wrong the uh, insurance companies will look at will look at these things when you come to them afterwards they do they do i mean it gives you a good reason to say look i have got a risk if i'm considering to insure my crop i maybe should have insured it uh, five or six days ago um, i've already in the long term, I've already insured many, many farmers for their stone fruit and their early pears. So that's already been done. So thank God we've got cover in place for what may happen next week. And the insurers are quite happy to accept that risk. Um, you know, they're long-standing clients, so they're not going to deny you insurance. But I mean, if you come on 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 Monday morning and say you want to insure for for hail today, you're not going to get it. Or if it does occur, you won't have any insurance. The policy will only accept seven days later and that's that's i always say you know plan ahead you know be like a squirrel yeah. and plant your nuts plant your nuts <laughs> yeah in season interesting um i did in 2018 i was mm -hmm. in the lung cliff and did quite a a number of interviews with farmers there and when you drive through the lung cliff now you see a lot of hail nets it's an area that has yep. traditionally um, received a lot of of they tell you stories about hail in that area that makes your hair stand on end. And um, yep. one of the one of the farmers was telling me that they they don't replace as often as a lot of their neighbours or as the tradition is. But when they replace now, they only replace uh, when they replace an orchard, it will have hail net. So um, I think it's interesting also to to put it out there is that we're all seeing agriculture disappearing under netting. Um, in, in various parts, well, actually all over the Western Cape and the rest of the country. But there is a reason why that is done, because as someone says, you know, the um, farming is like, a, it's like the factory without a roof, you know. But now at least with a helmet, you're putting a roof on and there is some form of protection. So I would imagine you're seeing a lot more of that as well, Ebo. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, farmers often think, you know, Ensuring that putting up hail nets is their first line of defense, which is fantastic. And it's prevented a tremendous amount of damage to crops mm. in, the, in the past and will do so in the future. What 
obviously I'm in the insurance industry and we insure hail nets as well, you know, against uh, things that can go wrong. Historically, insurers used to only get uh, fire damage to hail nets, so you can't insure your storm damage to hail nets. So yeah. it's a big investment that goes in. You're putting a couple of hundred thousand rands per hectare on hail nets and the insurance industry is also wised up, uh, you know, to get wind damage to hail netting is virtually impossible. Um, what we do, however, and what I have seen is where some farms in the past have had tremendous amount of wind damage before a hailstorm occurs, where the where the wind rips the, the hail nets apart, mm. and then just after that comes the hail. So the first line of defense is now gone. So we've now created some product in the crop insurance market where we, we can give hail net or hail cover for crops under hail. So it's about probably about two thirds or just more than 50% cheaper than your normal insurance, but it still gives you some cover, some level of cover, which is important. Okay. Uh, especially yeah, I've, I've been doing some, some kiwi crops in, okay. in Richmond, um, where, you know, they've had hail or windstorms rip their nets apart and now suddenly they're exposed, um, for the rest of the season. Um, so you yeah. can, you can get those products available. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Very often, before the when a cold front comes, the first thing that hits you is the wind, and yes. as you say, just just right there, the wind comes, flattens your nets, and the, and then after that, the hail comes. As they say, it's like yeah. on the boot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think in my thirty years of thirty two years now of doing crop insurance in this country, I think I've seen enough damage to know that. Uh, you know, you need to plan financially yeah. for risk mitigation techniques and taking the successful farmers that have taken out crop insurance in the past are still farming. The ones who didn't take out crop insurance are no longer farming. Um, yeah. That that to me is a concern. You know, you might see it as a grudge purchase, but it's it's a lot cheaper paying a two or three or four percent premium on crop insurance than going to the bank and and on a bended knee asking for another loan and paying prime plus one or two percent to to carry on farming uh, for sure really yeah, what you were saying about parametric insurance it's it sounds very interesting and um i mean you were explaining that they that the processes are happening for it to become to for it to be introduced into south africa and used commercially um is that is that well underway is it something that you see happening soon it is it, it is already being utilized in, in the grain industry. There's one company okay. that already does, they don't call it parametrics, they call it um, ground, ground for uh, versiekering. Um, okay. In other words, they, so they've got, it's all based on, on statistics. And okay. if I can share my screen again and try and get to the website and, and how they do it, um, it goes. It's very interesting the way they do it. Um, bear with me one second. Sure. Because that sounds like a, it sounds like a very good solution to um, explaining. Well, if if the tipping event occurs, you will get paid out um, according to the percentage, and I think that that yes. makes it a lot easier than trying to assess the loss and pay on the loss assessment. Yes. Can I, I'd like to share a second screen. Um, okay. Well, I'll just, just on. remove this one. Uh, just, let's just see. So I'll stop sharing. Oh, and there then, we go. Um, yeah. You add the other one. Then, yeah, if I then share, present. Technology is always a bit of a challenge. Let's see if we can get this one working. You then, but it's been very, very okay. interesting. Okay, so this company does soil moisture insurance, for instance. So you can, for instance, go and live go do a quote. I'm just giving you a live case example. So you can decide where you are in the country. So if you are based in, uh, let's pick a easy vessel, Braun, you're a farmer in Floyunskruen. The grid lines are, are 11 kilometers by 11 kilometers. If you click your grid line, you can now say whether you want to insure your 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 
ground moisture at a certain level, whether it's 20, 40 centimeters or 20 centimeters, understanding that the correlation between ground fog or ground or soil moisture correlates quite well with the production and the yields of, of crops in that region. So you can see clearly over the last from 2008 to 2020 what the deviation is you can see clearly what the claim payout would have been in those in those periods you can say the severity over five years or eight years what would be the severity you can choose your your risk period this is now 11 october to 30 november you can choose 11 march to 30 march you can choose your rand value per hectare you can say 15,000 rand of say 15,000 rand per hectare and that it immediately gives you a premium rate as well and it'll tell you when you would have had payouts at that with these pr parameters um so wow. yes this is this is parametrics so you can so so, 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 but so that that item is literally live on a website you can go there this is live and, and is so live. it just gives you a quote <clears throat> And then yep. you obviously speak to the um, the broker, and they will set it up and get everything done. That's so, exactly it. So you can you you can play around with your own with your own measurables and deviations. You can you can decide. You can you can speculate. You can see how. And these this is this is historical weather data which they've brought into their system. And um, where did they get the data? Is it from uh, probes, satellites? From, what? No, this would be from recognized uh, Department of Agricultural Data. So, okay. you know, so it's it's live and you can, I think it's brilliant that you can start doing this. And yes. You know, if we, and I think the future will be as well, if you can start zooming in and you can say, you know, where is my, where's my farm in the country? And you can start saying, okay, that's where I'm farming. Um, my farm is located in this region. And that region will give you maybe a different power. And um, hmm. it's very accurate. It's fantastic. You would it be okay for you to share the link? Would it be okay for you to share the link to, to this website with us, yes. please? Yes, I will do. And um, do. It, just it, put it, it in the discussion. It, it would be nice to um, have it at the bottom, add to card, check out, you fill in your details yes. and you pay with your card and you don't have to worry about dealing with a broker <laughs> or somebody again. Well, this is pretty much broker driven. So we are recognized mm. as a as a broker for this company. They they are part of an insurance company. Um, they are right under the license of God risk. Um, but they've been very innovative in the way they've, they've brought us to the it's very market. cool to see it like that. And then yeah. you can you can see you can see basically what what are the stats and you can it's you take a you're taking a you know covering a risk um, and seeing what the, what the, how, how things have looked before um, and Correct. you take some chances. Absolutely. Um, Very interesting. Yeah, I think, the, I think the information these days that is available to, to us in South Africa and globally, is, it's, it's immense. I mean, I want to show you maybe uh, just in maybe another website um, on, on South Africa. Um, Sorry, I'm just taking your time here, but it's, it's no, not at all. It's very, very interesting. I, I, I think I think I think it's important to to share this very kind important. of information. Uh, I'm just into a code, yeah. Because as you were saying, so often in the agricultural sector, crop insurance is a grudge purchase. Correct. But 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 when you need it and you've got it, it really it can it can it can save you it can save your business. So I'm just going to share again. Two seconds, guys. I'm no worries. Hope that's not someone phoning you about frost. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. So, so I can I can zoom into South Africa, for instance. I can now say let's 
So to, to we, is, is this a public a public accessible website or is it? No, no, it's not. No, it's okay. not. I mean, I'm I'm subscribed to it, but I can, for instance, go and choose layers for uh, flood zones, for instance. All right, so I can look for for hailstorms, and I can look for so that gives me cyclic data, right? So now you can see on your if you can see, look at the bigger screen there, you can see hail. This is South African hail zones. And you can now, for instance, choose an area in the country where you're located. So you can say, what is serious? The probability of hail storms is low. If I look at your valley, again, let's go zoom into to the Hex River Valley. Um, so now you can choose where you're living. So I can see exactly whether you're in a 50 year a hundred year flood zone or whether you are in a hail zone, right? So this is information which is which is used on a global scale by the reinsurers to see, you know, how risky is your farm. I can I can add in layers That's like uh, I can say winds let's take the, the hail storm away and I can say wind zone and I just delete my my, my flood there. So now I can say, are you in a windy zone? Um, very low. You must go look, look in the Breda River Valley for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. And I, no, you can you can clearly see there is a low. The minute you go to Worcester, your your wind is still low there. But I mean, if you look at yeah, I mean that just gives you a global picture of wind. So if you think about the renewable energy sector, you know, yes. you look at where all the all the turbines are. The turbines are. Okay. You know, they're going to go up into, into the Karoo in Sutherland. So there's plenty, not windstorm, but they can look at historic events. Um, and I can load every farm data I can load in here as well. I mean, I, that's the kind of information we have readily available. And we can go even further and we can, sorry, it's going to go look at. Um, I can look at climate change, um, and you can look at three-day precipitation. You know, this is this is the forecast for weather going going forward. Um, you know, how will climate change affect regions, and which is very important to know. Um, you know, three-day precipitation for the next. You know, what's going to happen? Moderate decrease. That's climate change. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the reinsurers are building modules in the background for for the whole world. I mean, you can, I can, ask, for instance, if I just want to go to have a look at a um, historical earthquake, for instance. Um, earthquake. Wow. Have it, have it, there was a, have there was a big one in Morocco at the, um, just like last week or the week before. Yeah, I, I can I can have a look at that now. I can tell you natural hazards. Um, I can have events. So, sorry, I'm just playing around here, but it's interesting That's to fine. see. Very interesting. Very interesting. See. So, it's taking a lot of time to load. So, so, if you look at the, it was an earthquake in, on the 9th of September. Um, have a look here. There we can see the earthquake. Um, I mean, these are things which aren't even reported in the media. You can see it was a six magnitude earthquake in, in, in Indonesia. Um, okay. If you look at the Morocco, the Morocco earthquake, there we can see the impact of the Morocco earthquake. You know, and how it affected the various regions. So it's phenomenal the amount of information we can look at uh, flood data. Um, you know, this is a flood in where is it somewhere in Japan? Uh, this is recently um, tropical cyclones. Um, wasn't there a flood in? There wasn't there a flood in New Zealand Greece. like also in the, in the last week? Oh, Greece, Greece. Yeah, yes, Greece. that's correct. There was Greece. one in Greece. There, there is one in sorry. Uh, it was one in Greece now. You can see what happened there. Last part of Greece experienced. So it's wow, phenomenal. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's very interesting to see how, how and these this is how the reinsurance market looks at you, you know. So 
you know, you can look historically as well as a, as a region and say, um, sorry, I have a event here, uh, premium. We can look at historical events, for instance, earthquakes, which occurred where. Um, this gives me a, a good picture of historical events. Is now, this earthquakes? This is this is now historical epicenters, earthquakes. You know, people are saying, well, earthquakes don't occur in these regions, but it, you know, <laughs> you see this happened in two thousand and three. Um, yeah, wow, this is it's, incredible it's information. It's, it's it's phenomenal, and you look at South Africa and you zoom down here and you can see, well, we had an earthquake here in 1970 remember i was three yeah. years old uh, yeah. i do uh, remember uh, some of my uh, earliest childhood the, memories uh, <laughs> our house in the nay valley was was just on that sort of fault line i mean we felt it we had cracks in our home i mean that was a 5.7 magnitude earthquake is, so, it, is that the tilbach one that destroyed tilbach that yes. was that was the tilbach one yes. yes you can see where the epicenter was in tilbach um can I ask you to go and look at New Zealand? It would be interesting to see what yes. New Zealand looks like with the earthquakes. Yes, I will. But look at look at the zone. Look at the yeah. I mean, this is mind blowing. Wow. We live in a we live in a vicious world. There, eh? there's your earthquake, <laughs> New Zealand. That one, <laughs> this one was in. The, there's your the big one. Ninety five was the big one. Seven point one. Uh, yeah, but just look at that. Another big one. Twenty sixteen wow. was a seven. There's a big one that occurred there. My goodness. Well, we could look at this all day. Welcome, but welcome, it's welcome it's to the very, world very the interesting. Show. Yes. And it, and you know what? As they say in Afrikaans, to measure is to know. And, and, and yeah. this obviously is a very important tool for you, for your industry. No, absolutely. I think, you know, and we can do it. I mean, I can, at a click of a button, I can uh, do a report for anybody in the country or around the world to say, what is your population? What is your vegetation? What is your, what is your fire index? What is, what are the risks associated with your operation anywhere in the world? And that, that's the amazing thing about having access to information and data. Uh, as much as people hate sharing data these days, it's a valuable tool. And this is how it gets practically applied. And that's yes. very, very important. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you very, very much. It's been incredibly interesting. Um, as you yeah, say. This is, going, this is going to go onto the podcast list now. Yes. <laughs> very, very interesting. And, um, yeah, well, one of the just anecdotal things I've noticed about, well, we were chatting about it, is that because so many people are trying to get fruit into the market earlier, they are planting earlier and earlier varieties. And sometimes... Um, from from you know when bud break was on grapes thirty years ago to when, when bud break on grapes now it's two to three weeks earlier, so you re you are actually already pushing the limits um, yeah. by trying to do that. So late August, early September, all the way to um, you know close to October, it's a very dangerous time for particularly for early grapes, and um, yeah. we have heard we have heard that there's been. Quite a lot of damage again and you know really thinking of the guys yeah i think one has to look further than that i mean the, the, our industry is so interwoven i mean we have a symbiotic relationship between farmers insurers banks marketing agents everybody is so dependent on on what comes off that farm so the way we communicate with each other you know it's also the sometimes the wrong message goes out to our markets overseas you know where Indeed. i remember many years ago where you know there was a massive uh, rain flood damage or excessive rain damage in the orange river and the message came through but south africa is producing poor quality fruit and you know suddenly the hex valley and the bread river valley were, and even the the berg were affected by prices being reduced because you know the perception was that Africa was was being hit by excessive rain, which wasn't the truth, you know. So it's how we communicate to the markets as very well. important, you know? very very important. 
you know, losing losing one or two million cartons in one one region is not going to kill the industry. It's, you know, some industries will make up for it, and the volumes coming from another region will be obviously to the advantage of somebody else. But I do believe people really should sort about taking care of their risks a bit better, speaking to the likes of ourselves and how we can help them. And remember, I, my my whole philosophy is never to sell insurance. Um, it's really to give advice and try and mitigate risk better and whether you do it in a your own self-insurance structures or whether you buy insurance insurance is just one tool same with hail is another tool same Indeed. with frost fan is another tool you have to take a holistic approach to managing your risk you know having micros instead of drip you know if you think you know it might be a bit more expensive but in the long term if you are planting early varieties the usually stop so thinking about the irrigation systems, those are, those are critical factors. Yeah. Well, thank you Stanford, very, very much for joining us. Devot, anything, anything last from your side? No, I'm a bit speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Eva, thanks so much and um, best of luck. And if the parametric insurance becomes a reality, that will be really good for... Yes. Uh, you, will be the, you will be the first to know, Louise. I think, Fantastic. Um, we get it right, um, it's going to be an advantage to the entire industry. I do believe so. I do believe Fantastic. So. Thank Thanks you, guys. So and thank you so thank much you. for hosting just, me. Okay. Yeah, just well. don't, don't, don't close your video yet. I'm just going to end this, and then we'll we'll thank you off here. Okay. Thank you, Eber. Okay. Thanks.